Hello my friends, here I am again, Pedro, attempting to overdub my own videos in an effort to get everyone to hear my reviews. Bienvenido al canal de audiófilos y locos. Por favor, si no conoces este canal, Hello, my audio file friends. If you don't know this channel, subscribe and check out my other videos. It's Sony CS5. Let's talk about this enigmatic speaker that everyone knows. There are thousands of reviews on Amazon, and most of them are five stars. Why? I'm sure that you also know this speaker, and that's the reason why you're here. So let me talk to you a little bit about the speaker and then I'm going to do some sound demonstrations so you can hear for yourself. Do you think it's possible to get a speaker of great quality for around a hundred bucks? And the price fluctuates, it goes high and low. Right now they're around hundred and fifty dollars on Amazon. Sometimes they go down in price, but it depends on the demand. But even so, I, I will pay more for that. Vamos a ver qué dice Sony. Let's go see what Sony says on their website about their speakers. But I see there's a lot of uh, models here. This is CS5. Today they're 150 bucks, but the price goes up and down. I think I paid about 140. But they look, uh, it looks like they have some really interesting ones. Look at this ones. This looks like a Diapolito configuration in between the tweeters and super tweeters. Very interesting. They look good. They look really well made. Oh, real wood. And a twin ports. This is amazing how they keep making stuff and bombarding us with equipment. Let's see what they say around the CS5. Here they are. High resolution. That's kind of like when they used to say digital ready in the 80s. Or, or now it's a low fat or low cholesterol. 100 watts. Uh, take a beating. Super traders to make you smile. The woofer looks great, really decent. The box, it says it's rigid, and I agree. This must be another speaker because the CS5 only has one port. Specifications, 53 to 50. So three-way means they're using the super tweeter for highs and the tweeter just for maybe low and mid-range. I mean low, low highs and high mids. But going up to 50k, that's good for the bats. Let's see what impedance. 87 dB for sensitivity. 6 ohms, that's a pretty friendly impedance, not so bad, not so difficult to move, but 87 decibels, I don't know, that we'll have to see, let's see what happens when I connect it to my apps. Alright, so what do they sound like? Let's just start with the bass. The bass well, mostly are not there. Yeah, they will surprise you in in a small room, you know, by their size. Uh, they're pretty competent in a small room. But in this room, listening to things like the song Doing It Right by Daft Punk, which I usually play to evaluate the bass, the la those four notes that the bass plays to sound even. On these speakers, the second note doesn't sound the same as the first one or the, or the last one. But the low note comes out pretty strong. 
The best part of the speakers are, are the, uh, the mid-range tones, the voices. It could be baritones, it could be sopranos. It doesn't matter what you put, the voice reproduction is very natural, very beautiful, and very good imaging, very focused, pinpoint imaging. I have speakers that are not this good in terms of uh, the sound staging and presentation in 3D. I can't stop listening to them, and I'm going to keep them. I have no, no reason to use them, but I think they're about to be instant classics. Let me tell you something. I have the Harvest P3 ESR here, which are amazing speakers for 3,000 bucks. Fantastic. The BBC Legacy monitors. I'm not going to say that this is on the same level, but if you listen to this at night, in the dark, without really knowing what you're listening to, I tell you, you will probably put these speakers at a much higher value. These are really great speakers for the price. Spectacular. Mid-range is tactile, it's real, present. And the heights have a lot of precision. They're crystalline. Instruments like the harp, the piccolo, they come out like they should, but they're not super aggressive. Of course, most of the time, I had these speakers connected to my Bass Labs 150.8 and my audio note P2 SE. You can hear more uh, sound checks and demos if you join Patreon. So anyway, my amplifiers are costing, you know, 10 times more than the speakers. But that tells you the potential that these speakers have. If, you, if I had to move or if I had to take my quads for repair, uh, I could use my Maggie's LRS or my Celestians. But let me tell you, I've been listening to these for four days straight and I haven't felt the need to disconnect them or take them out. I haven't said to myself, ah, this is uncomfortable, I don't like it, I don't feel good. Quite contraire. If they ask me to listen to more music, to try different records, to try streaming, it's really a, an achievement. And I'm not the only one who says so. There are many, many, many reviews. My friend Royce from Vivir Digital, great channel, says the same. I'm not saying that they are mana from the heavens or that they are nirvana. Of course, there are shortcomings with every speaker, even on higher price speakers. And these ones will need a subwoofer if you want to have them in a big room or depending on what you're listening to. But what I wanted to say is the quality of the mid-range and that of the highs deserves just to be bought. You should buy them. Just right now, in my opinion. I did. 
I'm going to keep them. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. But they're totally worth it for the price. I can compare them to the POC Monitor 40, which recently I listened to and I gave him a great review. If you haven't seen the re review, I put the video. And the problem with the POCs is that as the volume goes up, uh, they start to come apart. They show more coloration and they get a little bit ugly. Not with this. This one, they keep the composture, but maybe in the bass or if you put some heavy metal music or a big orchestral, yeah, they do suffer a little bit. But mostly for jazz and small ensembles, instrumental and voices, you can keep bringing the volume up and they, they really hold together, the speakers. They really do. Of course, when you're going down in the quality of the amplifiers, then you're going to lose also sonic quality. So they do need good amplification. So if you're thinking of getting a system for the first time, you may be transitioning from headphones to a sound system, I would say buy a great amplifier that costs way much more than these speakers. I challenge you to do it. Get a great turntable, really good amp, and then buy the speakers. You're going to be great. Estaba preparado para tu incredulidad, así que escúchate cómo suena con mi almarro de 4.8 watts por canal. I was prepared for your skepticism, so I prepared this little uh, video for you, and I'm playing with my 4.5 per channel almarro tube amplifier. Uh, my kit amplifier from Nelson Pass, 5 watts per channel. So that's what they used to do in the 70s and 80s. You would go to Lynn or Nime and you would get the most expensive turntable and a nice amp. And what did you get? You get the Lynn cans, which was a tiny speaker. Uh, they didn't have any bass, but they had that legacy, you know, British speaker, and they sounded great because the amplification and the source were good. And this is what you're going to get with these speakers. You're going to be able to allow to spend your money well, your hard-earned cash in a really good front end, good amp, and then 
Just get these speakers. They will reproduce everything that's going into them. I don't think because it has these two tweeters, uh, super and Twitter and a Twitter, that it's going to be an, a bright speaker. They're not a bright speaker at all. They're very nicely balanced. Of course, that means with good amplification. What happens is that the Twitter is being used sort of as a uh, high mid range. And then the Super Twitter is covering just a little bit over that. That's my suspicion anyway. And speaking of crossovers, I know that there are a lot of people out there that are modifying them and there's videos on the internet that tell you how, how much better the speaker could be. But I would be afraid to do it because you spend more money, might as well just maybe get another speaker. And also, I wouldn't want to change the tonal balance on the speaker. I like it just the way they are. I don't know how they're made. I don't care how they're made. I, I leave that to the people who design it. For me, as an end user, I love the speaker just the way it comes out of the factory. I don't think that because the speaker is so affordable, it's not well made. In my opinion, it's much better than a... Look at the screws that it uses. Uh, the ring around the woofer. The Twitter looks nice. Everything bolted down with Allen bolts. The cabinet, of course, doesn't have a great uh, veneer. It's just like a matte finish. But it's tastefully done. It looks nice. It's not uh, vulgar or, you know, that calls attention to itself. Very sober design. They look great. I love how they look, how they're made, and how they sound. Of course, I'm not getting any money from Sony for this. No promotions. I'm just doing this so you know what's going on here. It's my job to tell you how great these speakers are. And there are many reviews and many videos out there. You didn't need me to tell you that. But it's true. The hype is real. Just look at the terminals. The post, the hole is big enough just so you can put the bare wire across. Unlike many other speakers that you see at any price range. And also you can do uh, banana or spades. It's really a nice touch. And it doesn't end there. On Amazon, if you buy these speakers with the receiver H190, which has a phono input and Bluetooth, you can get the receiver and the speakers for less than $300. Less than these Bose Bluetooth speakers and the JBLs that I bought. If you're looking for a nice pair of speakers because you want to start a system or you want to add another system in another room or just for your television or monitoring or your computer, just find an excuse because these speakers are really worth it. I've been listening to this for a few days and they give me a lot of pleasure, but even more pleasure to know 
that I paid 140 bucks for them. That's what it's all about. We could have super high-end equipment, very expensive gear, but we can also enjoy highly affordable gear that makes us smile when we think how little we spend and how much satisfaction and happiness we're getting out of it. Thank you for watching this video and putting up with my translation on demand and consider joining us and joining Patreon and helping the channel. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.